How's it going everybody? If you guys are new to this series on my channel, I make some sort of uh, 3D printed lure and you guys get to watch me make it. And if you like it, at the end of the video, you guys can download it and make it yourself for free. Now, I just got a bunch of new uh, saltwater soft plastics, so we're going to be making our first saltwater bait in this video. It's also going to be our first saltwater soft plastic. So we should probably do something basic, you know, practical. Absolutely wrong. Nope. We're going to do a hog choker. Now what is a hog choker? A hog choker is this little ovalish flounder looking guy. So we're going to get right into modeling this. I'm not really sure how this is going to go yet. It's either going to be really difficult or super easy. I'm used to doing, you know, normal fish. Now for the bottom half. Alright, that wasn't too, too bad. Now we'll add some thickness to this. That looks good for our main body. Now we'll do uh, we'll do the face next. That's going to be the pain in the ass. So I want to get that out of the way. So we're just going to draw this out using our spline tool. So that is our mouth done and gill plate. Now we are going to do these fins using the sketch tool as well. I'm not going to make them as jagged as they are on here because I don't think that's going to show up in the printer too good. So the way this guy got his name is apparently these are like a trash fish. So a bunch of farmers used to catch them and throw them up onto their, uh, I guess, pig pens, whatever you want to call it. And they used to choke on them because of their spines. Hence the name Hog Choker. So that's pretty neat. Alright, that's going to be our fins. Now i got to draw out all these little rays, so I'm going to go do that. Alright, so it's coming out not too bad so far. We just got to do the tail and add a couple eyes and make the mold. So, we're going to do a ribbon tail just because I have an idea for how to make this work as sort of a paddle tail, but, but that wouldn't really work with an open pour mold. So, we're going to use our spline tool, a ribbon tail for this thing. All right, this is our final product, not too shabby. Now all I got to do is draw the mold box around this and then we'll print it. All right, this right here is our final product. So I'm going to print out this mold. It's a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I'll see you guys when that is done. Several months later. So I got a wee bit distracted. This mold's been done for a while. This is version two. The first one was way too thin to put a hook through and I felt like it was just gonna rip out. So I redid it, made everything a bit thicker. I've actually shot this or poured this a bunch of times now. We're just waiting for a new batch of plastic to heat up. We're gonna mix up a pink color for this. I'm only gonna make one more. I wanna make sure this thing actually has a chance of catching fish before I go making a ton of these. So originally when I made this, it was kind of just to be like a dumb, funny idea. I thought it'd be cool to have a flounder imitation. Plus, you know, you're out fishing with your buddies and then you're not catching anything. And you tell them you're going to whip out the hog choker, you know, get a good laugh out of it. There was a little premise on how this might work, but I really had no real hopes for this. I've been thinking about it for a while, and we might actually have a good shot at catching some fish on this thing. So you're telling me there's a chance. So the hog choker is this little brackish water flounder, like I said in the beginning of the video. But they're native to the whole northeast coast and they live up in the brackish water streams or not streams estuaries and the tidal rivers and stuff they do go into the bay and freshwater but they're mostly in the brackish area and the stripers run up all these areas in the spring for their spawn so th there's no way they're not eating these things and i can guarantee you no one else has made or thrown a hog choker lure before the closest thing i found online is some like freaking 12 inch monstrosity halibut teaser for rock cod in California. So we're definitely gonna give this a good try. I'm gonna pour one now after all the bubbles go away. I don't wanna waste a ton of plastic on this cause I only got a gallon. I wanna make sure it's actually gonna work. But I say this is either gonna work very well not at all. I've also noticed you really can't get away with using flake in these. I maybe with a denser flake or a lighter flake, but the first color I tried brown with some flake to make it more, look more realistic and all the flake just sunk to the bottom. So there's a teaser while we're waiting for that. This was my original injector. This one's a four ounce. And this is what we used on all the molds I made before. Now, this is my new one. This is an eight ounce injector. It's twice the size. So this is, means two things. Number one, we can make 
more cavity molds. So we can make nine, 10 cavity worm molds. To any of the lures I made before, we can make a much bigger mold. Now, also more importantly for me, or at least what I'm more excited about, means bigger lures. So look forward to seeing that. All right, so plastic's ready and we're going for the pour. Now I'm still not great at these open pours, but this one's a little easier than the cross since everything's so big. All right, so that's good. We're going to wait for this to cool off, uh, clean it up, and then stick on the ice. All right, this should be more than cooled down now, so we're going to pull it out. This mold's a little dented because I was very cheap on the infill, and I only put 15%, but that's not really going to show up. You guys should use 35% infill on this. The mold box is made out of PETG. That's what I recommend using, unless you're going to use resin, then that would be Sariatech Sculpt. So I'm just going to peel off this flashing, and I'll show you guys the other ones I made. You don't have to do that, but the adhesive in the eyes, the, the stick-on eyes I bought, isn't really strong enough. And this super glue will make sure it's on there forever. And there we go, we got some eyes. So that's our pink lure. Here we have a nice chartreuse color. Same deal. And my original attempt at the brown natural looking color. And one side note that's I guess kind of cool about this. The chartreuse glows up quite well under uh, whatever light this is. I'm using an old fish tank light to light this. But yeah, I guess that's pretty cool, right? Nice glow in whatever light lures. This is going to be it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys want me to make next in the comments down below. If you're interested in what I already have planned, you can check out my latest channel update and that gives a brief synopsis on what I'm going to make next and I'll see you guys in the next video.